Hi, this is Dr. Mike Chupp, and you are listening to CMDA Matters, the weekly podcast of the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. I am so excited about today's podcast for a number of reasons. First, our digital media team here at CMDA has been working for many months now to upgrade our equipment and get us prepared to start offering videos with some of our episodes. So today's podcast is our very first official video podcast. If you happen to be listening to the audio version on your mobile device, would you take a moment and just check out the video version? You can find it at cmda.org slash cmda matters, one word. Another reason I'm excited for today's podcast is because our featured guest today is Mr. Dallas Jenkins. If you're not familiar with Dallas, he is the creator and director of The Chosen TV series, which has garnered such positive ratings and millions of views for its depiction of the life of Christ. Dallas joins me on the podcast to share a little more about the multi-season series, how it's impactful for Christians in healthcare, and to give us a small preview of what he will be sharing at the upcoming 2022 CMDA National Convention. Let's jump right into our interview today with Dallas. Well, it is indeed an exciting privilege for me to welcome to CMDA Matters, Mr. Dallas Jenkins, who has graciously agreed to join us in April for our annual national convention in Indianapolis. Welcome, Dallas, to CMDA Matters. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's nice to be with you. Well, it was the strangest thing, Dallas, about a year ago or so uh, on Facebook with a friend of mine who's a pediatric surgeon in rural Kenya, posts on his Facebook you guys got to watch this series, The Chosen. I've watched this uh, several episodes, and you all got to watch. So my wife and I jumped on and watched a few episodes, and we were hooked. We've now watched all the episodes of both seasons a couple, three times, and we've become, I guess, chosen evangelists, if you will. <laughs> and you have a lot of fans here at CMDA. You've been working on this project, which you have created, the largest crowdfunded media project in the history of entertainment. When did it become apparent to you that this was going to become a very unique phenom within the Christian world and beyond? I think that there's two moments that were indicators that this was something abnormal, uh, something bigger than I'm capable of, I like to say often. Uh, but before I share that, I, I want to give a caveat is that I genuinely don't anticipate things. Um, I genuinely don't predict on this project. God took all that away from me mm -hmm. after I had kind of my biggest career failure, which is what ultimately led to The Chosen. But I really didn't expect or predict anything when it came to this project. So none of what's happened has either been surprising or expected, meaning I didn't I didn't expect anything, nor was I nor nor am I necessarily surprised because I've gotten to this place where God can do anything. So I certainly don't take responsibility for it, but I'm not necessarily shocked because God's been doing such amazing things. So that's just the foundation of what I'm gonna say. The first time was when we did the crowdfunding. So I did a short film for my church's Christmas Eve service. It was about the birth of Christ from the perspective of the shepherds. I filmed it on my friend's farm in Illinois, 20 minutes from my house. And that short film, while I was doing it, is when I came up with the idea for the show. And then when that short film ultimately generated over $10 million from 19,000 people around the world uh, interested in uh, investing in my idea for this show, that was the first indicator of, okay, wow, there's something here. I certainly didn't predict this. I certainly didn't think this was going to work. Other people thought it might work, but I thought it was a little bit of a ridiculous idea, mm. crowdfunding. Uh, the second one was last year during the, uh, well, I guess this would have been 2020 when the pandemic hit. And we decided to make the show free for a few weeks and give people the option to pay if they wanted. So you, all eight episodes, every country in the world, totally free. And if you want to pay for it, we call it pay it forward, where you can pay for it, which allows us to keep going and do future episodes and seasons. We figured we'd lose money for a few weeks, but we thought it was a good will gesture during COVID and it would gain more viewers. And that's always helpful. The day we decided to make it free, our income quadrupled. The wow. next day it quintupled. And that seemed to be the beginning of a tipping point for the show to where when I would go out in public, I would get recognized. We were hearing from people all over the world. And so that, that was for sure 
that that kind of early in the pandemic, the decision to make it free and what happened as a result of that is when we really started to realize, okay, this is this is bigger than we can currently absorb. We need to grow. We need to expand our our organization. So since then, it's been a pretty much nonstop growth when it comes to to uh, impact and numbers. It's been quite an extraordinary ride. Well, Dallas, I, I'm sure most of our mm-hmm. listeners have watched episodes, but th- for those who are not aware of The Chosen, it's in, translated into 50 languages now. And I, I just got on the, the app on my phone today, 346 million views. A number of people are, are seeing Jesus and the disciples and a story that is so innovative. I, I also got on your website today and saw lots of people commenting, including your father, which really cracked me up. He was like, finally, my son produced something that's worth watching. Uh, th- that uh, along a, a number of uh, famous people uh, who've commented on how much it's touched their lives. Yeah. Without giving any details, Dallas, your very talented cast has the show doing the show depicting Christ and the disciples impacted their lives, their hearts as they've been portraying uh, the lives of people we know from Scripture? Yeah, let me give one quick clarifier. My dad, we had we were getting endorsements from from well known people. My dad is Jerry Jenkins, the author of the Left Behind series, and uh, I just thought it would be funny if his endorsement quote was, "Finally, my does my my son does something that's <laughs> worth watching." He actually was horrified when he saw that and thought people were going to think he was serious, and and yet most people have thought it was hilarious. It's tongue in cheek, totally yeah, tongue in cheek. Of course. So I just wanted to clear that up so that he doesn't uh, get blamed if people are bothered by it. But yeah, I think this has been one of the unique things about this project. People who have been involved in this project have had their lives significantly impacted by it as well, uh, including, I would say, you know, over half the cast and crew are not believers. So when you're portraying characters from scripture, people from scripture who were disciples of Jesus, and and you're, you're doing these scenes that involve a character sacrificing their life for Jesus or, or giving up everything to follow Jesus, and where you're quoting uh, scripture as, 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 you know, lines of dialogue, um, it can't help but impact you. And, and we've seen over and over and over again, so many cast and crew, and then members of our, of our full-time year-round company, who at the time the chosen came into their lives, they were at a low point. They were at a desperate point. Um, they were at a point where they were saying to God, either I surrender, I don't, I, I, I don't know what's left. You're going to have to show me something. I'm, I'm at my weak point. Or I, I, I don't know if I even believe in God. And it's, it was at that point that the chosen came along in their lives. And so by impacting others, uh, they're being impacted as well. And when you're someone who almost overnight are being told from people all over the world that your work is changing their lives Mm -hmm. and changing their families' lives, it really sobers you and it makes you go, okay, what in my life do I need to take a look at? And am I ready for this kind of uh, fame that's coming not necessarily from traditional celebrity, but from impacting people who want, when they meet you, they want to tell you, you've you've changed my life. Like, thank you for changing my life. That's a big deal. One of the consistent things I hear from those I talk to about The Chosen among our members is how moving it is to watch Jesus healing miracles. And I'm not an emotional person, Dallas, myself, but I must say the leper being healed just brought me to tears. My wife looked at me and said, are you okay? And I've heard that over and over again on how you've depicted, and of course with the computer animation and how the healing happens. Do you have actually healthcare consultants or physician consultants who are helping you with these uh, miracles that you're depicting? That's really interesting. We don't necessarily have uh, healthcare professionals consulting on the healing part of it because the healing part of it isn't a traditional medical practice. So I don't think asking a doctor, how does someone heal leprosy in, in, in three or a shrivel- seconds? Or a shriveled hand for that matter. <laughs> yeah, right. Is I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of advice uh, to give. But we do definitely consult when it comes to, okay, like you just mentioned, the shriveled hand. What would that look like and what would that have likely been the cause? What would be the, the symptoms of something like that? Um, leprosy, there's a lot online about it, so I haven't spoken to someone specific about leprosy. But what we did was we, we go online and we, we look at different 
leprosy cases and go, okay, I don't want it to look this gnarly because that's going to be distracting in the mm-hmm. scene. And we're, we're very much about the emotion and the spiritual impact of each of the scenes. So when you watch miracle scenes, you'll find that they're oftentimes as much about the people observing what's happening and how it's impacting their journey as it is about the miracle itself. And we also try to build a backstory in a cultural and historical context so that when this miracle happens, you're less focused on the computer-generated graphics that are taking place, or you're less focused on the, whoa, it's a miracle. You're more focused on the, wow, what? how is this emotionally and spiritually impacting the characters in the show and myself? So I, I, I give you all that to tell you why, for example, with the leprosy, we didn't turn it into someone who was had an extreme case where the moment right. they come on screen, okay. you're almost wanting to look away because it's so... It's so gnarly and you're, and you're thinking to yourself, well, how did they do that? Well, when it comes to the special effects of it, uh, we're really trying to get you to focus more on the heart aspects than the physical aspects. So yeah, we do consult with medical professionals on certain things, but we're also trying to steer it more towards the spiritual and the emotional, which I think is part of medical too. And I th- I'm guessing that that's part of your organization is, is, is a holistic approach to the body beyond, you know, the, the, you're also healing the heart and the mind. Well, more than even the, the animation, the computer animation is the tenderness and compassion. And I, I said to my wife, Dallas, if Jesus can be portrayed in that way by, by Jonathan, the actor, then just think of what the real Jesus Christ was like when he interacted and healed people like that. Jesus, half of his ministry approximately, of course we're biased, but we look at the miracles and know that he, he was the great physician. What plans do you have for, again, portraying and emphasizing healing miracles in the future seasons? So season three, we cover the woman who had the issue of blood. Mm. And we actually take more than one episode to kind of give, kind of introduce you to her, because that's something we really like to do with The Chosen is is instead of just going from miracle to miracle, Bible verse to Bible verse, where you don't ever get to know anybody, we really try to put you in her experience. So that's a big one, because that's something that involves a condition that's extraordinarily rare. I mean, that, that you know, we, even when I do research on it, you know, online, it's hard to find too many cases of something like that, where someone was potentially bleeding for, for 10 to 12 years, whether it was menstrual or not. Uh, so that that's an example of a big one that we're doing. But again, we're when it comes to future seasons, we don't want to turn the show into a miracle of the week show. Jesus's miracles were always a means to an end. Sure. Uh, he was coming after someone's heart. So he did heal their bodies often. And we had a whole episode in season two dedicated to Jesus healing repeatedly. You know, he healed dozens and dozens of people in one day, but the episode actually didn't show any of the healings. It showed maybe two people who had been healed and how they were reacting, but the focus was on the disciples and how they were dealing with all this. And then the focus was even more so, and this is where maybe you and uh, and someone who's listening who's a medical professional could identify with is the exhaustion Jesus felt at the end of the day. Yeah. So he had been pouring himself out repeatedly. And, and a medical professional, of course, isn't having the the release of power that Jesus feels that the scriptures talk about, that when this woman grabbed Jesus's garment, he felt power go out of him. Well, it's not necessarily a spiritual power that is, that is coming out of you every time you do an operation or, 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 or or help someone, but there is a, a, an exhaustion that sometimes people don't think about. And that, you know, it seems like medical professionals oftentimes aren't getting poured into by other people. Like, how are you doing after an eight hour surgery? You know, I know the patient is exhausted and the patient's in a lot of pain, but what about you? And, and so these disciples are arguing about all these things that are happening and, and getting worked up about how intense their lives are. And then Jesus just walks by and doesn't even say anything. You know, all he says is good night. And the exhaustion and the blood and the sweat that are all over him make a statement of this is just how much it takes to serve this much. And that's more about what we're focusing on than it is the specifics of the medical issues, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Dallas, have Christians in healthcare, whether physicians, dentists, or other types of healthcare professionals, have they had had any kind of an impact in your life so far? Well, for sure, in the sense that one of my daughters has a pretty persistent medical issue. She's got Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So she's she's just someone who, in fact, you know, shortly before I came on with you today, I got a text that she potentially has a heart condition that we have to look into. Mm. Um, so one of the things with her, and uh, I also have a daughter who's on the spectrum. I have a son who uh, has a medical condition. We, had, we adopted him and he has a physical uh, condition. So we're always looking 
um, and experiencing doctors and professionals, the ones that we cling to, the ones that become our friends and the ones that we are going back to repeatedly for advice and, and collaboration are those who A, tell us the truth, and B, who are, again, holistic. And I don't mean holistic in the hippy-dippy kind of way, but but holistic in the, uh, we are not only going to treat this condition, but we're going to find the root cause of it. Uh, we're going to pour into this person in a way that we're going to find out that where, where the, the mind and the body are connecting here and, and where they're not connecting and where that can fi- be fixed. And so the, the, the ones who've had a significant influence on my life are those people who have really gotten out of the specialty role of, okay, we hear that you have persistent sickness in this area, so we're just going to give you these pills. The ones that we're clinging to and the ones that have had the most influence on our lives are the ones who are looking at this from a multi- from multiple facets and ways that our hearts and minds can be um, adjusted as well so that we can better serve our bodies. Else, where are you shooting season three? Uh, what's the location for that? Yeah, it's actually where I'm talking to you right now. I'm in Midlothian, Texas. We're on the Salvation Army campsite there. They've got a thousand acres, 700 of which are untouched here in uh, Midlothian, Texas. On those 700 untouched acres, we are building uh, sound stages and a first century set. And uh, that's where we're going to be uh, calling our permanent home for, for season three and future seasons. Well, when you join us in April in Indianapolis, and I think we're going to do it in interview format, what's a message you would want to come out uh, with those uh, our members hearing? Well, I'll share it when I'm there. I mean, I can't get all the way right now. But, but to give you an idea, is uh, there's, there's a concept and a truth that changed my life a few years ago when I was going through my biggest career failure. I mean, I don't like to use this cliche, but I was at the end of my rope. I was exhausted. I was discouraged. I was feeling like maybe this isn't even the right career path for me. Maybe I've missed it. And God spoke to me very clearly in a very powerful way, and it changed my life, and it, and it in, so, in many ways changed a lot of other people's lives because of what happened with The Chosen is, is this concept of uh, it's not your job to feed the 5,000, it's only to provide the loaves and fish. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, medical professionals probably oftentimes feel, especially in a pandemic, that it's their job to save the 5,000. So I, I'm going to talk about, I plan to share my personal story of how God uh, worked in that and how God taught me that truth and what that truth actually means in the day to day. I'm sure there are thousands upon thousands of stories, emails that you've received, letters maybe even. Talk to us about some stories that just have really touched you and your wife. Well, there's just so many. I mean, we hear every day from people whose entire families have been transformed and that never stops, never gets old. But I think the one that really stands out happened early on. It was, again, early in the pandemic. Uh, before we had been translated into 50 plus languages. Now it's, I think it's upwards of 75 languages. Before the show had grown to to where it is now, uh, this woman from China contacted us and she said, here in the pandemic, we're literally locked in our homes. I mean, we can't go anywhere. And uh, she said, my my husband and my children and I, who range from ages like eight to 15 or something like that, she said, we're, you know, we're watching television and we decided to, to, to watch The Chosen. And she said, I'm the only one in my family who speaks English but I really wanted to watch this and my, my husband and kids wanted to watch it because it was about Jesus. And um, she said, the show's in English. It wasn't translated. We didn't have subtitles yet. And and she's got kids who are young, you know, kids who are young, as young as eight years old. And the show was not made for kids necessarily. I mean, I, it, I've been shocked by how many kids love it, but it's a complex storyline. It's not directly, not everything is directly from the Bible. So some people who are expecting Bible verses are get confused sometimes. But she said, they feel they they understand the story. They can't wait to watch the next episode. They were binging it. They were begging her to keep going, even though they didn't speak English, and even though they were uh, raged from, you know, as young as eight to as old as her husband, who was in his forties uh, or fifties. That really wrecked me. I that that I could not believe that the show was breaking through cultural barriers, language barriers, age barriers, and that they were seeing an unvarnished look at the authentic Jesus. That'll always, I'll I'll never forget that story of, of, a, of a family that most of which didn't even speak English who were moved and wanting to watch the show. And, and clearly it won't be till heaven, Dallas, when the Lord lets you know, well, this was the impact of the chosen globally on the kingdom of God and the harvest is plentiful. Are you able to follow where people are viewing these 346 million views on the chosen? Are you able to know continent, regions, who's watching and where are you surprised? Uh, you mentioned China. I'm surprised by that. 
there are some limits because we don't require people to sign up when they do it. I mean, they, they, they get to watch it for free. They don't even need to give an email address if they don't want to. Uh, but we are able to see where the app is being downloaded. And um, yeah, it's uh, after the United States, it's uh, Brazil uh, for sure is a, is a strong, strong second. Uh, the Philippines is huge. Australia is a, is a big one. So yeah, we are seeing it's in literally every country in the world. And we're able to see kind of where the most downloads are happening. And then we're starting, we we're able to see on social media kind of where some of the activity is coming from. And uh, so uh, Brazil and the Philippines were first and second after the United States, both chronologically and in terms of volume. But uh, yeah, we're just seeing it grow and in places we can't serve. That's That's been kind of the good news and the bad news sure. is that it's growing so fast. And there are countries that are where it's where the word of mouth is exploding and we don't have any infrastructure there. We, we're not able to get like T-shirts and sweatshirts that people want. People want DVDs in their language. People want, uh, you know, so are, are some of our social media that has become so robust in the States where we, we don't have it. So we're in literally, I mean, I literally talking to you right now is, I walked over from a, a, an all-day meeting that I've been having with my staff about how we're building out international efforts for, for 2022. But it's a massive, massive endeavor that we have to take on to even just absorb what's already happening. Well, as you mentioned earlier, we don't want to spoil what you're going to share for us in Indianapolis uh, come April. But what will you be in the middle of in April when you share with at our national convention? What Where will you be in season three, shooting scenes from that season? I will be filming. And, and uh, the only uh, I, when we when I committed to come, uh, we didn't have filming schedule locked in yet. So it, it, I was like, yeah, there shouldn't be a problem. But just in case. You know, it's 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 you know it felt like a time we might be filming, so we made it on. You know, I was on a Saturday. I mean, I will be shooting all day Friday, and then uh, uh, filming season three, and then I will somehow I haven't booked it yet, but find a, a late night flight and get in. Yeah, late Friday night, so I'm ready to go uh, Saturday morning in Indianapolis, and then when I'm done, I'm flying right back wow. to, to Texas. Well, Dallas Jenkins, thanks for joining us today on CMBA Matters, and. You've got a lot of our members excited. I've heard from our president that a good friend of his is going to come just because you're going to be speaking at the National Convention in Indianapolis. Give us one major way that we at CMDA can pray for you in the next uh, three months before we see you in Indianapolis. Oh, I appreciate that. I think the biggest thing is my family. I mean, we, uh, my wife and kids bear the brunt of the sacrifice that we're making to do a show like this. It's a full-time job just to do the show. It's another full-time job to be the CEO of now a company that is that is growing. Um, my wife is, uh, she writes the, the, the bulk of our extra content. So our Bible studies and our devotional books and children's books, she does the bulk of that work. So we're spent. Um, I mean, we love it and we're, we're thrilled, but my family still, I just always, anytime anyone asks, how should we pray? I say my, my family, you know, health issues and, and uh, travel, you know, and being, being apart sometimes is just really challenging. And I just pray that God not only sustains our family, but, but never lets me forget my number one priority, which is being a husband and father. Can I pray for you right now? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, thank you for creating Dallas and uh, for giving him such creativity coming from a family with creativity that's inspired us over many years. And I, I thank you for what you've accomplished in his life, for uh, him being willing and courageous to use his five loaves and two fish and for the stress on his family that must be there each and every day and week. Take care of Dallas between now and April and may this ministry not just be 345 million views, but that so many um, the harvest is plentiful, and thank you for the way that you equip your sons and daughters to take out the gates of hell. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That means a lot. God bless you, Dallas, and thanks again. Thank you so much. Well, spending these few minutes talking with Dallas has had me thinking about our upcoming national convention even more. If you haven't registered yet, I want to encourage you to register now and reserve your spot. God willing, we will be together again. That's our theme in Indianapolis, Indiana, my hometown on April 21st through 24th, 2022. As we find renewal, refreshment and revival together, Dallas will be joining us, plus you'll get to hear from Professor Carl Truman, the author of The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. 
He was my guest on CMDA Matters last year. Lila Rose, who's the founder and president of Live Action, will also be joining us. And then Dr. Daisy Dowell, who serves as the board chair for Christian Community Health Fellowship. We're planning on having each one of these speakers on the podcast in the next few months. So you'll get a special preview of what they want to share with us at the convention. For more information and to register, you can visit natcon.cmda.org today. It is so incredible to hear about how the Chosen TV series is changing lives, especially in the midst of our culture and this ongoing pandemic here in 2022. Millions of people are watching and feeling the emotions, including me, as you heard me share with Dallas, and many more are being spiritually impacted as they observe the miracles that our Lord Jesus performed. Well, there's a remarkable parallel between Christ's ministry and the work that we do as healthcare professionals. We are able to facilitate healing of the bodies and souls of our own patients through the skills that we've gained and the insight given to us by the Spirit of God, whom the Father sent to us. When we focus on healing our patients, both physically and spiritually, that has a kingdom impact on our patients and their families. That's why CMDA recently produced Faith Prescriptions. It's now available for free to CMDA members in our CMDA Learning Center. This on-demand video study is specifically designed to help you live out and share your faith in your practice. It provides training on everything from LGBTQ issues in the healthcare arena to praying with your patients and sharing your faith in ethical and appropriate ways with colleagues and your patients. You can get started now by visiting cmda.org slash learning. Even though he's not in healthcare, Dallas briefly touched on how he knows that the weight healthcare professionals are carrying due to the ongoing pandemic. It is so true and we know so many of our members, probably you, are feeling incredible pressure as the latest Omicron surge continues. Well, if you're feeling burned out and somewhat overwhelmed by your daily demands, please reach out to CMDA's Center for Wellbeing. You pour yourself out for others every single day. And this is the place to be refilled. Pastor Burt Jones, who's the Center for Wellbeing Director and our coaching team want to help you find the sweet spot of life again to help you find or regain what the Bible calls shalom. If you'd like more information, just visit cmda.org slash wellbeing or click the link in our show notes today. An additional resource we have here at CMDA that I think can be helpful to you, especially if you are feeling that increased level of burnout, is CMDA's weekly devotional. It's written by past president Dr. Al Weir. These thought-provoking messages are designed specifically for healthcare professionals and the challenges that we face on a day-to-day basis. If you're not yet subscribed, you can receive this email from us. Just visit cmda.org slash blog today to sign up. Well, before I wrap up, I just have one more announcement for you. And women, this is specifically for you. If you're looking for fellowship and community in healthcare, then you don't want to miss the Women Physicians and Dentists in Christ virtual conference being held February 5th, 2022 from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Joy Walton from Ohio State is the featured speaker, and her focus will be running the race, enduring in the Christian faith. There's not much time left, so you can visit cmda.org slash events to register today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode with Mr. Dallas Jenkins. I enjoyed getting to meet him face to face. If you haven't had a chance yet, 
don't forget to check out the video version today. There's a link in our show notes, or you can visit cmda.org slash cmda matters. As always, if you want to suggest a future guest for the podcast, you can just email us at cmdamatters at cmda.org. And if you like our podcast, be sure to give us a five-star rating and share us on your favorite social media platform. And by the way, tell one of your colleagues there right as you're on rounds or in the office today. I was so touched and inspired by Dallas's story of the family from China who had been so impacted by the program. And it was only the mom who actually spoke English. As Dallas just shared with us, the show is breaking through cultural barriers, language barriers, and age barriers. As viewers are seeing an unvarnished look at the authentic Jesus Christ. That struck me so profoundly because that's exactly what we're called to do here at CMDA. Our vision is bringing the hope and healing of Christ to our world through healthcare professionals. Through the work you are doing in your practice and in your community, on your campus, on the mission field, and across the world, friends, you are breaking through cultural barriers language barriers and age barriers to give people an unvarnished look at the authentic Jesus Christ. As you share God's love through healthcare, you are bringing the hope and healing of Christ to the world. That's what matters to CMDA and CMDA matters. We'll see you next week, Lord willing. Thanks for joining me today. This podcast has been a production of the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. The opinions expressed by guests on this podcast are not necessarily endorsed by the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. CMDA is a nonpartisan organization that does not endorse political parties or candidates for public office. The views expressed on this podcast reflect judgments regarding principles and values held by CMDA and its members and are not intended to imply endorsement of any political party or candidate.